343 responds back to community feedback of the recent store update. We had a nice little player increase with a new event, how the mode attrition became to be, and the BTB fix has gone live, but did it actually fix BTB? We'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So at this point, I'm sure it's pretty much burned into your memory, guys, from watching YouTube content. But I'm sure you guys all remember this tweet from Jerry Hook saying that they're looking to provide stronger values in their bundles, starting to put individual items outside of bundles and more when it comes to the store. And well, you take a look at the store and while there aren't exactly individual bundles as in or individual items, because there actually are none. Reddit knows this and asks, like, what happened to the individual stuff? Sketch replied to the saying. Store slash economy changes are going to happen gradually over time. The main weekly offer price reduction goes into effect this week. Expect to see more changes and some specific content experiments in the weeks to come. As per Jerry's tweet, they will be listening and learning in season one, and I anticipate broader changes coming the further down the line with season two. So it's great to see that we got some feedback when it came to like, hey, you said there were going to be individual items, but there were no individual items in the store. What happened, dude? And <laughs> basically, the sketch it sounds like maybe with season two, we're getting some updates when it comes to how the store will work. This isn't going to be the first and only update for the store, guys. This is going to be a kind of a swinging pendulum of momentum. If you think about it in a way where it was too far to the right of like, you know, being way too expensive and not really that user friendly. It might swing a little bit more to the left and maybe a little bit more. There's going to be updates and changes over time. This isn't going to be like an overnight change when it comes to the store to be in a good spot for the community. But I think right now, this definitely is a step in the right direction. Like I mentioned in my Cyber Showdown video that I uploaded yesterday, that like I still feel like some of the stuff might be a little too expensive. But some things like the Neon Superfly bundle, I thought was totally worth it. And I bought into it. 343 has the data. They have the feedback as well. It's just a matter of time to kind of get the store in the right place. But one thing I think would be really great for one, player retention and also to kind of keep people buying things into the store would be a way to earn credits in game games like fortnite and also call of duty and i think also apex legends does this as well where you can earn in-game credits through the battle pass that you can spend that money to buy either a new battle pass or you can buy items in the store as well hopefully with those season two changes and a lot of requests from the community that will hopefully get a chance to earn some in-game credits for the season two battle pass i think that'd be a perfect place to put that kind of grind into the game. Plus if you give people credit, right, it gives them the chance to actually spend money in the store to give them that experience. So like that first time of buying something within the store is always the hardest thing to do. It kind of cracks the seal in a way to where you can actually get them to be like, okay, comfortable with this mechanic of going to the store, buying some cosmetics and then have it put it on your Spartan. I think once you cross that line, which is the hardest line to cross when it comes to a store, for, especially for Halo, since it's the first time we had gone free to play with like a store like this, the hardest step is to get people to do it. But once you get people doing it, it becomes more of a habit and part of the game. I remember how I said about player retention and stuff like that. Well, it looks like Cyber Showdown has certainly helped out with player retention as well. I looked up these stats and it does seem to line up as well, saying that Cyber Showdown event resulted in a 30% increase to concurrent player numbers on the first day of it launch. Almost the exact same increase as the past two events as well. Now I did check out these numbers on Steam and that does line up properly. But also remember that we're just looking at Steam numbers because for Microsoft's most played games, they don't have any numbers, but they lined it up, which looks about right, saying that the most played games are Fortnite, Warzone, Grand Theft Auto, Apex Legends, and then you have Halo Infinite right after that, ahead of Roblox, Rainbow Six Siege, ahead of Destiny, ahead of Call of Duty, and even ahead of Minecraft as well on the platform. So whenever you see player count numbers, just remember that it's multi-platform and you're not getting the full context. But one can assume that if there's a 30% increase on Steam, most likely a 30% increase on Xbox as well. But I've been really enjoying the Cyber Showdown event. Uh, one mode I've really been enjoying is Attrition. We actually got a little bit of insight from a 343 developer. Give us like the inception of Attrition, how that mode came to be. 343 Carnivore, who is a multiplayer game designer at, well, 343 as you can imagine, said this about Attrition saying that the prototype started out as a question, how can we edit Slayer to have more of an exciting crescendo? The first step was flipping the scoring model on its head kills don't award points, they whittle down the playing field. 
which I've been really enjoying my time playing Attrition. I've played it a bunch on stream last night, had a couple good games, you know, had some rough games as well, as social tends to go. Uh, but I've been really enjoying the mode. I really hope it comes to stay with us as well throughout the like custom games or something like that. I can see that being like a rotational matchmaking playlist uh, that we get to see what happens. But the one thing when I'm playing Attrition, I just can't help but think that this is like Battle Royale light. Uh, it's just because like the mechanics are there, dude. So like think about it, like you get when the match goes on for a long time, you have a ring that closes in on the map to press the issue, right? Just like a ring does in like a Battle Royale mode. You have a limited life mode, which is exactly Battle Royale. You have the ability to revive your teammates, which you should be able to do that in Battle Royale, and you can as well in this game. And also, one thing I always kind of thought that like, when I was going to be playing, like say hypothetically, a, a Halo Infinite Battle Royale, that you would want to have equipment in a game like Camo and Overshield, but you want to be able to use that when you want to, right? Instead of just use, utilizing when you first pick it up, and well, that's exactly what you can do right now with Halo Infinite is that you pocket the overshield or the camo and activate it when you need to, which is exactly the kind of mechanic you'd want to see for Halo Infinite Battle Royale. I feel like this mode is just like lightening up the community and kind of getting used to the idea of like how the mechanics work in a Battle Royale. Because right now all you need to do is just like go onto like the campaign map of Xena Halo, randomize some spawns and you know get the ring working properly and get like maybe like 100 players on it. And yeah, that's a Halo Infinite Battle Royale. Of course, I would like to see Halo try to do a little bit more than just like a regular like PvP Battle Royale. I think if you throw in some PvE elements into it, I think they'd be really interesting. But I just like can't help but think of like, dude, this is like basically Battle 4v4 Battle Royale. This is like basically what attrition is. And I know that everyone's main concern with the Halo Infinite Battle Royale that it would take away from development of like the main game for to be good. And well, the main game right now is good, so. I mean, I think the door is kind of wide open for a battle royale, guys. Uh, I think attrition is just there to kind of maybe lighten us and get us prep us, get us ready for the, when they announce it eventually, I think. And especially with that Microsoft acquisition of Activision with all those battle royale developers that, yeah, you never know. And for our last bit of news today, guys, the BTP hotfix has gone live and actually brought some other fixes as well. As you can kind of take a look right here, saying that they changed up minor service adjustments to BTP matchmaking. Uh, minor being you couldn't find a game at all. But if you log in between January 19th to February 16th, you can earn five double XP and five challenge swaps as well. Interesting thing here is that they also said that the oddball minor physics improvements to the oddball to mitigate. I'm like to mitigate what but i'm assuming it's the ability to launch the oddball up into the sky to reset it with a melee i tried doing this in the custom game you couldn't do this but there is a little bit of a catch with this update guys that the btb fix didn't work sketch sayer said that the today's btb hotfix does not appear to be the outcome we expected there are minor improvements but overall matchmaking issues are still occurring thanks to the folks who have been working hard and we're sorry that we didn't quite get the job done work continues and it definitely continues for me because yeah i still can't find any btb games i tried earlier today and it just like would get me to the part where the match would load in and as soon as you would get thrown into the game right that's when the server crashes and still can't play btb right now which is a shame i was really hoping for that it might be some extra weeks going on guys until we get a true btb fix as this is a developing story, I'll keep you guys updated throughout the whole process. But if you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. Got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos right there for you guys. So thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.